Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this Wednesday morning. Got a great show lined up. We'll get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Principal Mike Heppenstall and the staff out there, they're taking a break this week now, but be sure to check with them next week when you get an opportunity. Uh, we're still, I'm looking at it, it's going to be 30, low tonight, 38, and high today, 61. We're still in this, uh, this has been some kind of march. Uh, I, I'm like, uh, i got Ken Paramore here with me. We're both talking about when, when March gets over, we'll all be glad. It's, it's just been a, a wet and a cold month of March. Water temperature remains at 63 degrees. The river readings, take a look at the river readings. The Apalachicola sort of bumped up uh, last night, but it's falling out this morning. It's falling out pretty strong. It's reading right now at almost 14 foot. It almost hit 14 foot, almost hit 15 uh, yesterday, but it's dropping out at 13.8 and dropping on out, and it's going to uh, it's going to get to, let's see, all the way down to 12 foot for the weekend. It'll be at 12 foot and level, all right? Now, the Choctaw Hatchet at uh, Caraville, the Charter Hatch at Caraville is reading a 9.5. It's rising a little bit, and for the weekend, uh, it's going to be dropping out. If you want to fish in Fallen Water Friday and Saturday, you can fish at Charter Hatchie. Okay, so that's following that reading right now, though, 9.5. Our tide chart, we really just uh, just have some neat tides. This full moon, I don't know if you saw it last night, it's beautiful, and it's going to be uh, really uh, neat tides today, but they're going to pick back up. Uh, actually on Friday, and Friday and Saturday we have some nice nice tidal flow, but uh, to yesterday and today not much going on. We do have a little bit of outgoing tide uh, this afternoon. It started moving out a little bit, okay? So uh, the marine forecast will be west-northwest at 5 to 10. West-northwest at 5 to 10, so it'll be a little bit choppy out there, but not quite as bad as that 10 to 20 we've been having, so it's down to, down to 5 to 10. All right, let's take our first break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back and welcome to Captain Ken Fairmore. Good morning. How are you? Oh, doing good. good. Always glad to have Ken on. We're not going to start about talking about rules and regulations. Start with we're going to talk about some turkey hunting. Now, uh, Ken, I, I saw this nice picture you sent the other day. This, congratulations on. Uh, well, you know. Check this out. Yeah, the old saying: a blind hog can find an <laughs> acorn once in a while. Uh, well, I got lucky Saturday morning. Well, you know, first of all, I, I was asking you how. How in the world did you stay out of the rain? Because I know I talked to a lot of turkey hunters. There he is again, and they were all uh, were canceling out because of the rain. So what what happened? You know, I, I woke up and uh, I had hunted. That was the fourth morning in a row at four or at four in the morning. So yeah. it was the fourth morning I, I I had planned to go, and I got up and really there was not much on the radar at four o'clock in the morning, and uh, I decided to go. It was blowing a little bit, and I hate to hunt when it's windy for them because you can't hear them yeah. or you can't hear very far and they I don't think they can hear you a lot of the time so mm -hmm. anyway I went just for because I was awake and uh, I got up there it was blowing a little too much to suit me but it wasn't too bad and I listened for a little bit and didn't hear anything and I could start hearing it rumbling thunder um, on the coast down here I mean it was you could hear it and I said man where's that coming from yeah I got my phone out and I looked at the radar and it was just solid red down here on the coast mm. and it looked like it was headed north and I said, I, I don't have an hour probably, you know, maybe an hour and a half. And uh, started sprinkling, so I got in the truck, and waited it out, then I moved, mm -hmm. got out and listened, I didn't hear anything, started sprinkling again. It wasn't a hard rain, but you know, you don't want your calls wet and I don't like to sit in, in the rain with my, my gun and yeah. my calls and everything. Uh -huh. You know, the wooden calls, if they get wet, they're done. They won't work for a while. Anyway, uh, I moved to the third spot and it had quit raining. And I got out and I was listening. I heard one right off the bat and he wasn't too far. So I got my stuff together and I, I kind of got halfway between the truck and me and him. And I set up and he went to calling and he was gobbling and, and uh, he came over a little rise and uh, when he got over the rise, I could see him, you know, when they stick their head out and gobble, and he was all bowed up. And uh -huh. <clears throat> so it was, uh, I don't know, within 15 minutes, he came in within range and I killed him. So Very I was good. home I was home by 9 o'clock. Very good. And the invasion had a little window of opportunity because mm -hmm. another rain came in later, didn't yep. it? Yep, and yeah. I never did 
I didn't have to sit in any of that hard rain. Yeah. Um, I just, it was one of them days it all well, came together. That's what happens sometimes. <clears throat> go, 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 and then it all falls together. So the fourth yeah. morning in a row, I, I was able to get one. And so yeah. I got him by myself, so that was pretty cool. Well, good. And, and your son's gotten one this year already. We showed My that son, Matt, last got one weeks. last Wednesday, um, first week of the season. And uh, so we're doing okay. Doing good. Y'all yeah. doing real good. Doing real good. Well, okay. Uh, now that we've got a turkey hunting out of the way, uh, you still you still have one more to go, right? I got one more to go. Um, it's two in Florida per season. Right. So, uh, you know, some states, like I think Georgia and maybe Alabama, it's like five. <laughs> so I don't know how in the world they can get uh, five. Our state's only two. Yeah. And uh, I know one of our my officers, that's, uh, he, he's an avid hunter, Carl Hellett. He, he's already limited out. He got his second one yesterday or yeah yesterday morning oh, so so he's done um, <laughs> so i guess if you get it if you get it done early you can sleep in later well now but, we're, we're taking a score on stan how's stan doing <clears throat> stan and you know our other compadre yeah uh, i heard about that on a time or two and uh they're they've I, heard some it hasn't quite come together for them uh mosquitoes are really bad i heard the last time they went and <laughs> and i did notice that the other day too mosquitoes are starting yeah so yeah. I was thinking about that too. All this rain we've had in March, it's going to be April is going to be a tough month for mosquitoes. Right. So yeah, this, was, if, especially if it gets hot. Yeah. You know, if it gets hot, it's going to be it'd be time for the thermocells. And if y'all never used one, yeah. uh, believe me, I wish I had invented them because uh, they're good. We wouldn't be working for a living if we did. I, I was a little reluctant when I first heard about them because I didn't think they would work. But man, once I started using them, I didn't either. And yeah. then I heard somebody talking about them, and yeah. I reluctantly got one to try it, and I'll yeah. never go to the woods without one now. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, we're going. We're going to go ahead and take a break. We've got all kinds of stuff on the on the snapper and grouper and, and some really good information. I think going to really uh, benefit from. So let's go ahead and take a break now, and we'll be right back. Hi, right, welcome back. Sitting here with Captain Ken Paramore. We're just talking off air. We about got a, a mess now. With, I guess, for lack of a better term, with this red snapper situation. This, this is really. It's deteriorated even further from last month when you and I talked. So, Ken, yes, just tell, tell the folks um, what, what we were just talking about. It's unfortunate, um, obviously, for the recreational fishermen who snapper fishes like me and you and the rest of uh, your viewing audience. But the feds announced Friday of their season being 21 days here um, off the coast of Florida mm. in federal waters. <clears throat> it was proposed 27 days. And they have now set or announced they're going to do a 21-day season beginning June 1st um, in federal waters. Uh, the reason being is Florida has tentatively announced that we're supposed to do a 44-day season, um, which hasn't been decided yet because our commission is meeting on the 17th of this month, which three weeks away almost, mm -hmm. and to decide our season. But with our proposal of 44 days, or a tentative proposal, um, as I said last time, the harvest days are based on a quota system. And they anticipate if Florida is open 44 days, then they can only afford, obviously, the 21 days that they've set. Um, it could be worse. Um, Louisiana just opened um, their season I think March 23rd, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, and runs until, I believe it was September. There was a date in September, which pretty much covers the summer fishing season, which is, a, I forget how many days that is, probably 80-some days. But they only got nine days open in federal waters. They were cut down to nine days. They were days. cut down to nine days. Wow. Uh, Texas, who also chose to opt out of the federal um, being, being cohesive with the federal dates, they open theirs year round. And I believe there's a four fish limit. I forget how much the, the bag limit was, but mm -hmm. in that they're open so many days, they got reduced. It's more than nine days, but, and I forget how the formula works for those states, but all the states that opt out of, of mirroring what the federal uh, proposals were pretty much, especially if it was a longer season, got their federal days shortened in federal waters. So again, our state waters, our commission will meet on the 17th. It's the first item on the agenda. They're meeting in Tallahassee 
and they will decide on our season opening date and how many, which will probably be June 1. Yeah. And it's been proposed and announced that we may do a 44-day season. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so therefore, if, if, if the feds decide to do, because our, our days are longer, we could have our 21 days shortened even more. But for now, it's set at 21 days. The status is going to be set, if they approve it, at 44 days. Okay. So after 21 days, there'll be no opening in federal waters. The fishing will all have to be in state waters from day 22 to day 44. So technically right <coughs> now, we're looking at probably June the 1st through June the 21st, roughly, if they give us 21 days It'd in federal waters. In federal waters. Yeah. And you know, as you know, and what happened last year, we had a week of bad weather. Yeah. And yeah. they extended us by six days mm -hmm. at the at the tail end because of that. So, you know, if you take your weather days and and um, other things that come into play, 21 days is it could be even less because of the conditions. So not probably, even, you, know, you for, know, for weekend fishermen like you and I, we're looking at probably one or two good trips. Maybe it, it, you got we have maybe three weekends and probably one. Yeah, or two and if you like only that. have weekends, it's yeah. what six days. Yeah, that's, um, that's if right. If you can't yeah. go during the week, yeah. so. Some people, obviously, I think will probably be planning vacations and taking time off because mm -hmm. it's going to be their only time to fish in federal waters. I don't anticipate it being more than 21 days. Yeah. <clears throat> um, that doesn't seem to, to happen. So yeah. um, we'll see. We'll know what the state waters is going to do okay. April 17th. Well, we'll just keep it, keep it posted and, uh, right. and we'll, we'll know more about it later. Okay, what's the uh, latest on, on grouper? Grouper. Um, you know, there's that little that there, there's that season east of here, right, um, that, that Franklin, Wakulla. Those four counties will be open April one. So um, next we're looking week. Looking at Monday. Yeah, we're yeah. looking at Monday. Yep. Opening up. Yeah. And that'll run to June thirty uh, in those four counties only, and um, then state waters will open uh, July first mm -hmm. on Gag, west of. Um, the Gulf Franklin County line. Uh -huh. So um, Franklin, Wakulla, Jefferson, and Taylor, I believe, will be the four counties that it'll be open pretty soon for okay. uh, till June 30. That's the same deal as was done last year um, in that part of the state. Okay. Member <clears throat> uh, Jack, uh, it's open now until June 1st. So when Snapper opens, Member Jack will close. And the gags again in state waters will be July 1st, west of uh, the Gulf Franklin County line. Yeah. You know, I was really looking forward to that little window between uh, July 1st and July 14th, because at first we thought we were going to have 44 days, you know, with snapper. So we would have had a, a little two-week two window of, of snapper and, and, and grouper, but we don't, we don't think we're going to have that anymore. Just like in, um, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. All right, so uh, we're going. We've got a, a story. We've got the case of the month coming up, and this is going to be an interesting story. And Ken's going to tell us about some. Well, you, you started an undercover uh, group, or we've got a, a relatively new unit that's been in effect now for a year or two or a year and a half in my area here, which is in the center part of the Panhandle, and we call them the Resource Protection Service. And uh, okay. it's a group of my guys who work in plain clothes. Okay. And uh, they've been pretty effective lately. We haven't done a whole bunch of announcing yet because well, yeah. the nature of the work that it is. But uh, one of those members of that unit made a pretty decent case in St. Andrews Park at the jetties the other day, which is cool. what we're talking about. Cool. Okay. So we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Let's go ahead and take our final break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Sit here with Captain Ken Paramore. Let's first go over our fishing game forecast today, brought to us by Bart Cowart of Edgewater Beach Realty, 832-6000, anywhere between St. George Island and Destin. Give Mark a call for your real estate needs. We're looking at our time this morning was actually 1235 to 235, but this afternoon we're looking exactly from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. 1, 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock this afternoon would be a good time right there to, to take care of that. So uh, if you get a chance... Uh, uh, take off. I don't know if uh, you can get off that kind of time. Not today. It's, it's tough. The isn't plate's it? full. Sometimes. <laughs> Speaking of full plate and all, we're talking about uh, law enforcement and all, and uh, 
Y'all had a, a, our case of the month. Ken's gotten good about coming on with our case of the month. This is how we have more than one case a month. But yeah, guess, but the, there's every now and again there's one that's a little bit, you know, it's worth more to talk about than some of the other mundane cases. But yeah. this case, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this resource protection service that we've formed is a group of, of guys who work for me as officers, and but they work in plain clothes. And they go around different parts of the region and the, and the counties in, in places that it's hard to work either in uniform or you need to kind of blend in with mm -hmm. people in that capacity, you know, r rather than what I'm, I'm wearing here. So I anyway, one of our officers, Neil Goss, um, was working the jetties the other day in, in that capacity and went out on the end of the jetties and was fishing with the rest of them. And a guy caught a big redfish. And he brought it up on the rocks, and um, he was unhooking it, and there was a, a man standing next to him fishing, and he told him, he said, uh, that fish is too big, it's got to go back. And the guy kind of blew him off or didn't pay any attention to him, and he told him, he says, he says they got, it's too big, I can tell. Well, he says, well, how big do they have to be? And the guy told him it was in the slot, so the guy lays the fish down, and he takes out a measuring tape, and he measures the fish. Didn't say anything. He put his tape up. He put his redfish on a stringer <laughs> or on his whatever he was carrying him with. Uh -huh. Started walking off the jetties. Well, my guy was right there next to him, heard the conversation. So the guy's been told once. Mm -hmm. the, the guy who caught the fish is walking off the, the rocks. It gets down to where the rocks meet the beach. Mm -hmm. A charter fisherman in a, in a boat fishing in the pass pulls up to the rocks, yells at the guy because he could see this big redfish. Mm -hmm. And he starts yelling at him, that fish is too big, you can't keep it, you need to throw it back. And he's yelling at the guy. Wow. Well, my, my officer, Neil, was walking behind the guy with, that was carrying the fish, heard that conversation. So that's two warnings. So when Neil got up behind him as he was walking, he said, hey, he says, you want me to measure the fish for you? And the guy says, sure. So he lays the fish in the sand. He gives... Neil, my officer, his tape measure, Neil measures the, the redfish, now, which is now just about dead, yeah. almost dead. The fish was 36 inches long. Wow. He says, man, this fish is 36 inches. And, you know, that guy just said you have to throw it back. And that, that charter captain was irate. And um, he says, that's all right. So he, he puts his tape up. He walks up to the parking lot with a fish. Oh, my goodness. Three opportunities to, three, three to release yeah. the fish. Yeah. And when he got to the parking lot with the truck, it was like, okay, he, now it's time to do business. And so oh, my goodness. he got to take it. So that, That's amazing. Uh, you know, just you know, taking a lot out of it, just a fish that big is not good to eat, so why would you even want to keep them? And that's a breeding yeah. stock size anyway. Exactly. And, I mean, yeah, that's a big fish. And plus, you know, it's against the law. So. And he was, you know, it was obvious his intent was, regardless of the law, yeah to take that fish from the end of the jetty where he caught it to the truck and leave. Wow. So, um, unfortunately, the fish, uh, yeah, he it, couldn't be revived, yeah. so. It wasn't that big, it's a lot of stress no, and trauma was, just catching him and then, then. And you know, that jetty walking yeah. all the way from out there, laying it yeah. down a couple of times and measuring it. So, anyway, for that charter captain who's out there, we don't know who he is, but we would like him to know that um, that guy didn't get away with that good, fish. Good deal. So, Good deal. Um, we appreciate you hollering at the guy too. So, and as, as the citizens, you know, we need to tell. Like the first guy said, you know, that fish too big. And I, I've, I've done that at Jet as years. Sure. Ago. And, yeah. You know, and tell people because you know, honestly, sometimes these out of towners really do not know. But I've told people before, and they throw them back. And, right. And, and a lot of people will, but something gonna break the law anyway. And even if he didn't know, he had ample opportunity yeah. to get, try to figure it out. And obviously, he wasn't interested. He was. Yeah. He was going to the truck with that fish regardless. Yeah. So. And speaking, speaking of law now, well, I know there's a campaign coming out now, and every year we have this problem uh, about feeding the dolphins. And you sent me some good information. I may show it later, a little 30-second spot. But uh, the <coughs> dolphin feeding, it's, it's getting worse and worse each year. It is. It? Um, it's, it's a big problem. It's becoming a bigger problem. I know it's been ingrained in our society here for years mm -hmm. that you know, everybody feeds them, and at one point in time in the early 80s, it was common practice. But, and I, I tended to think that way, at, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But now, having learned what I've learned and seen what I've seen, it's gotten worse. Um, there's more people, there's more vendors, 
there's more people congregating to that pass to see them. And sooner or later, somebody's going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Either either a dolphin is going to bite somebody or pull somebody under, which has happened in other parts of the state and other states, and or p people rushing to see them and get around them is going to get, they're going to run over somebody in the water that's in, already in the water, yeah. you know, with a snorkel and a mask. And yeah. it's it's, we've come in from fishing last summer a bunch of days and it's just chaotic around the, the schools of dolphin that are there. Uh, not to mention it's, uh, you know, it's against federal law to feed a dolphin, mm -hmm. but it's also against law to harass them. Um, and, and there are guidelines as far as um, viewing them. They'd rather you not even swim with them. Yeah. Um, but harassment is harassment and feeding is feeding. But, you know, they lose their fear. It, it uh, imprints the young to... Uh, look to people in boats for food yeah. rather than fishing for food. Some biologists are attributing that to why they're taking so many fish off of our lines offshore because they're so used to boats and, and fishing and an easy meal. Yeah. Um, the other part of it is their health. Uh, p people will throw food to them and add them that is unhealthy for them mm -hmm. or is rotten or right. is, you, you know, it's just not good to, you know, to feed them. So this year, this summer, we We'll probably step up efforts with what I just talked about, our resource protection guys who will be in plain clothes out there. Mm -hmm. And there will probably be some people that will go before a federal magistrate for feeding or, and or harassment because it's becoming a public safety deal as much as it is harmful to the dolphins. Yeah. And really, we've we got to start an educational campaign, really, with the kids and all, because it's going to be a slow, pro it's been a slow process getting this point. Right. It's going to be a slow process reversing it and, and letting people know. So we just You know, it, it's like seat belts. When we were young, we didn't wear them. We no. couldn't find them in the front seat of a car. Yeah. And then we started, and then when, it, when they did pass the laws, we resisted wearing them. Oh, yeah. But then yeah. now, you know, our kids, oh. when, and my granddaughter, when she gets in the car, she starts reaching for her seat. Yep. You yep. know, they know. That's what it's going to take. You've got to start them young. Okay. All right. Well, Ken, we're going to wrap it up, buddy. That's a lot of good information. Appreciate Glad to be here. See you right. next month. All right. Folks, I want to thank you all, uh, as always, for watching the show. We appreciate your viewership. You be sure and do something good for somebody today, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.